Good morning, Relativity friends. Uh, in the never-ending ass-kicking I keep getting from general relativity, I'm trying to, do, to take it piece at a time, and I've moved on to trying to understand what is Riemannian geometry. Riemannian geometry is the geometry which uh, Einstein used to base his the, the theory of relativity. It's actually based on the pseudo-Riemannian geometry, but that's not important at this time. So I wanted to understand this without all of the mathematical jargon and formalism uh, that it is just absolutely it's full of. So once you strip all that out and you make it such that I can understand it, because I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree, I think I've got it now. Here is the definition from, the, from Wikipedia. I donate to Wikipedia, so I'm, I'm very comfortable in, ri in, in ripping them off. Riemannian geometry is a branch of differential geometry that studies Riemannian manifolds. And what's a manifold? Just think of it as a space. It's just a space. It's, it's, it's nothing sexy. It's just a space. But it needs to be smooth and differentiable. And you can understand what that means. It's smooth, and you can take differentials on it. And it has a metric, a Riemannian metric, and that metric is made up of in and inner the products. And if it has a metric, then we can use that to define angles and lengths and areas and volumes. So you can use it to measure real things. That's the point. All right. So let's look at what is the metric. But first, let's look at this. The generalized form of the Pythagorean the theorem is called the line element. The infinitesimal line element, the line element, the infinitesimal arc length, the arc length. It's got a lot of different names. But all of it is this equation. Now, be careful with this you ha if you haven't seen it, because these uh, indices in the upper here are different on both sides of the equation, right? So this 2 is a exponent. This is ds squared. This mu and nu are indices. So these are, as an example, in a, the Cartesian plane, which we're going to do in just a second, this is x, y, and z, all the permutations of x, y, and z, and all the permutations of x, y, and z. So this would, uh, you can use ones or, or symbols here or anything, but you're going to get nine terms if you do this in Cartesian, the, the, the space. All right, so what is this thing? Well, uh, as an example, in Euclidean space, the ds squared could be a small the distance between two points. Uh, in, in general relativity in space-time, which is four dimensions, it could be the difference between uh, two events. So one person's stationary and one person is traveling at high speeds, as an example. And they're going to see these, these two events. They're, they're going to see the, the distance in time uh, differently. But if they use this equation, they're going to measure the same thing. So that's what it's for. All right. Now, what's the metric tensor? Well, that is, in easy terms, it's just the dot product to define the basis of vectors. Uh, so think of it as a matrix, because its elements are a matrix of the dot products of all the permutations of the basis vectors. All right. <clears throat> and we already talked about what those are. Here's an example. In a, in a Cartesian the, the frame, using this equation, you're going to get nine elements of this equation, right? So you're going to have all the permutations of x, y, and z. x, as an example, across the top, y across here, z across here, and then x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z. All right, so that's the way it works. Now, what are the basis of the vectors in Cartesian frame? Because we're going to need those if we're going to define this thing. Well, you know what they are. You've been using them your whole life. It's just the unit vectors, i, j, k, or x hat, y hat, z hat, anything you want to call them, they're all the same. They're one unit long, and they're at right angles to each other, right? So you're going to have nine of these in the Cartesian the frame when you try to calculate the metric tensor. All right, so it looks like this. It is the dot, the product of uh, ex dot ex, et cetera, et cetera. So you put x, 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 y, 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 z, 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 and then you go down x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z, and you get this uh, uh, three by three, the, the matrix. Now, we call those orthonormal 
And you know what that means. They have a unit length of 1 and they're 90 degrees apart. All right, just a refresher, what's the dot, the product? The dot product of two vectors, A dot B, is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine angle between them. And they have to have an angle between them or they have no dot product. If they're parallel, they don't have a dot product. Let's, let's look at two simple ones, okay? So we've got EX dot EX. Well, what's the magnitude of these? Well, we know it's 1 because that's how we define them. They're, they're unit vectors. And what's the angle bet uh, between them? Well, they're on top of each other, so they have no angle. It's 0. The cosine is 0. It's 1. Now let's do the other. Let's do a cross term, EX dot EY. Well, we still got 1, 1. What's the angle between, between them? Well, they're orthonormal, so it's 90 degrees. What's the cosine of 90? 0. So what's that give us? It gives us the identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So the line element just becomes the Pythagorean equation. Now, let's look at some other the line elements. Okay, in lots of texts, and I have a lot of texts, and YouTube videos and Internet the, the searches, you see lots of people just write down the line element. Line element, line element, line, line element. Well, this comes from here. This comes from the metric, the tensor. And you see how it has zeros in everywhere off diagonal. If it didn't, you couldn't write it down like this, right? So as an example here, they're just taking 1, 1, 1. You see that. And here they're taking 1. And here they're taking R squared. Here they're taking 1. Here they're taking R squared. Here they're taking R squared to sine theta. So this is the Cartesian plane polar coordinates, the spherical coordinates, um, and the cylindrical the coordinates. So these are the line elements, all right? But the key to this is not this, it's this. You have to find the basis of the vectors, define the basis of vectors, and from them you find the metric tensor. This is the key to relativity. This little guy right here, the metric, the, the tensor. All right, so what do you do now? Well, if you can find the metric tensor, you can determine if the manifold, the space you're working in, is curved. So you use the metric tensor to find something called the Christoffel, the symbols. Now, I've done uh, some videos on that. I'll link all this stuff uh, in the description if you want to go further. All right, and it's given by this horrible equation where you have the inverse metric tensor. So you just find the metric tensor, you take its inverse. And it has the partial derivatives of the metric tensor elements with respect to the coordinates. That's what these are. <clears throat> and this is a su su summation index. When you see an upper and lower, it's a summation index. Okay, now if you find these Christoffel the, the symbols, uh, what happened here? Somebody jumped in on me. If you find that the Christoffel the symbols, this is uppercase the gamma, the gamma terms are zero, then you stop. That means the basis vectors are constant uh, throughout the space. Uh, and thus, it's not curved, so it's not a curved space, so there's no point in going on. Now, the the gamma terms in the plane, it's supposed to be the word plane there, the polar, the coordinates are non-zero out of the possible eight. There are three non-zero. What, what the heck does that mean? You know it's, it's plane, the polar coordinates, you know it's flat, it's not curved, so how can it have these non-zero zero elements? There's three of them. Well, that's because that the basis of vectors, uh, er and e theta, they're not constant the, throughout the space. So even though they're not zero, it's still not, it's, it still doesn't tell you they're curved or not. If they're zero, you can't go any further. There's no point. But if they're non-zero, you still don't know that if it's curved or not. So you have to go to the next step. And the next step is to use the Christoffel, the symbols, to find the Riemann tensor which is given by this even more horrible equation, okay? So, as an example, if I took these Christoffel the symbols here, and I've done that, by the way, and it's painful and long, and put them in this equation, every element is zero. All of the elements of the Riemann tensor are, are zero. So, the plane, the polar, the coordinates are flat, and you knew that before you started, but I just did it because I'm stubborn. All right, so if the... 
Riemann tensor has non-zero entries, the space is curved, and it is a Riemannian manifold, or a pseudo-Riemannian manifold, if you want to be real picky. So, now I understand what this means. It means that I'm working in a space where I can define a metric tensor. This is how it makes the sense to me without all the gobbledygooks. All right, I hope that helped somebody. I'll see you later.